Hey guys, Johnny C308. Uh, gonna do a video here uh, for uh, Blessed Cajun. Um, he wants to know how I take down and uh, clean uh, basically maintenance on the AR-15 and also some break-in procedures for the barrel, bolt, assembly, everything that has to do with an AR. Now this is all my opinion. This is what I've learned through all of my years in the military. Also, you know, for, it's all firsthand. None of this is something that I've made up. It's all stuff that I've done for a long time. And it's worked for me, and it should work for you. And if it doesn't, and I'm, I know there's tons of other people that have their own ways of barrel break-in, all this other stuff, but this is the way I do it. Um, first off, I'll uh, start off with my Black Rain here. Black Rain Noveski build, and... Uh, Let's see here. Let's get this set up and I'll go over the the bolt system first here. Or the uh, bolt assembly. That's where we'll start. Alright. Now, first off, uh, we'll go over a little bit of the you know the the pins, the upper and lower. Um, the whole time I was in the military I never popped out this front pin. First off, these pins can wear and tear very easily and that's where a lot of people get that slop between the upper and lower receiver which also that's supposed to be there. Um, I know a lot of people really want a solid you know platform. Um, if you get an upper and lower match set it's gonna be a little bit tighter or if you get uh, a pin kit, like an aftermarket um, cotter, or not cotter, but a pin kit that's better than uh, the standard. Um, I believe in one of my other videos, my buddy Ryan, he has that uh, pin kit, and it just makes it a tighter fit. Uh, the Accu wedges, I don't suggest getting, um, and also it just adds added stress to your rifle because it's supposed to have a little bit of play in it. So anyway, that's just my opinion, and you can take it for what it's worth. Um, anyway, usually pop out the rear pin. Well, first, sorry. Check and make sure you got a safety check. We're clear. And anyway, yes, I know the safety's off. Whenever I put my rifles in my safe, there's the spring system that's in the uh, trigger needs to be released. That way, you don't have that constant tension. So whenever I put my guns in my safe to be put away, hammer is always forward. That way there's no tension on that spring. That's just for you guys. I know there's a lot of safety buffs out there that would never do that. Well, you know, that's, that's not me. That's the way I do things. Anyway, pop out the pins. Or the rear pin here. All right. And you have your charging handle. You can either leave it in or not. I always take it out. You can slide it out just like this. And you can drop that down just like that. Anyway, we'll set this to the side for now. And we'll go over the bolt here, or bolt and carrier system here. Um, the first thing you're going to do is pop the cotter pin out. Then you're going to tilt it back, and your firing pin is going to fall out, which mine is a little bit dirty. Anyway, next is your cam pin. You push, push back uh, on your bolt and tilt the cam pin, and it should just drop straight out. On some of the newer ones, uh, it might be a little, a little tighter. It's got to work itself out a little bit. Um, next, you uh, pull out uh, the bolt, and then you have your complete bolt carrier group here. It's right here. Sorry. There's all your components right here. And this this and now I'll just go over basically what I clean out of the bolt carrier group and where you're getting most of your carbon uh, buildup and all that stuff. Also where you should probably oil a little more than other other spots. We'll start with the uh, bolt. Uh, on a direct impingement, you're going to have these three gas rings right here. Um, those are going to get a little bit dirty, not too bad. Just go over them with a cloth. 
Um, your major buildup is going to be right here. A whole lot of carbon. There's nothing you can do about that. It's always going to be nasty, just like kind of like mine is right there. It's been sitting in cleaner for a week since I shot. But you're going to get a lot of carbon buildup right here. And that's where the firing pin slides in. As you can see through that hole right there, that's where the firing pin comes through. Anyway, your uh, cam pin, just clean it off it normally. It's going to be a little bit nasty, but not too bad. Your firing pin is almost always going to be extremely nasty. Uh, that's a good spot right there to put a lot of oil is right here. This is where the firing pin meets your, the end of your uh, bolt right there. So there's always going to be a carbon ring right around there after you fire it. So you can get in with that and scrape it off with a scraper. Just a little, I usually use, uh, like I have a dentist tool, uh, those little dentist picks. I use those and scrape that out. That also needs to be completely oiled along with your your bolt here. Next on the uh, the bolt uh, carrier here, um, everything in here is going to be nasty and it also cake up right down there in the bottom where that hole is. So you can get down there with also the dentist tool, you know, squirt some uh, oil down in there and let it set in for a little while. Um, I usually scrape it out if it gets real bad uh, with one of the dentist picks or uh, use uh, cotton or not cotton swabs I'm sorry uh, um, q-tips sorry yeah don't use cotton balls that shit will get everywhere alright uh, yeah also oil basically right in here um, there's two holes right here on the on the uh, bolt carrier group so whenever your bolt and carrier is in your rifle that's a good spot to keep lubed and wet because that oil will drop in on your bolt right here and the back, back part of your firing pin and it keeps it lubed also. Um, the outside and the back part here you want to keep a light coat on there not too heavy or too thick uh, depending on where you're shooting if it's in the desert you know you're not going to want a shit ton of oil uh, on your, your bolt carrier. Um, because it's just going to cake up as soon as some wind or dust and all that shit's going to get caked on there. So you want a, more of a dry lubricant if you can put something like, uh, I know that rim oil um, with uh, the Teflon is what I used whenever I was in Iraq. It worked awesome. Um, there wasn't as much buildup as like a CLP, you know, the cleaning crap the Army gave us. It didn't work for shit. Um, but anyway. Alright guys, next is uh, we're gonna go over barrel break-in uh, procedure here uh, this is my own opinion just like I stated at the beginning of the video this is how I do it um, basically on a new barrel squirt some oil which uh, I guess it really doesn't matter you know just whatever gun oil you use and there's a lot of them out there there's like the M Pro 7 um, just just a bunch of different ones um, I use strike hold mainly but uh, Anyway, squirt some, let it run down the barrel, let it get in, seeped in a little bit. Um, I use a boar snake, is what I use for the range mostly. Uh, run the boar snake uh, through the barrel, and it's always from the uh, chamber to muzzle. Don't go the opposite direction. Uh, especially with a cleaning rod with uh, the, the brushes, uh, the chamber brushes or anything like that. Always go one direction, it's always this direction, out the barrel just like the bullet goes out the barrel. Anyway, run your bore snake through your barrel. Make sure it's lined up. Just like that, and then you're ready to go. Run about 20 rounds or so in sustained fire. Um, don't, don't heat up your gun, especially a new barrel or, you know, uh, a stainless barrel like this. Um, it's not chrome lined. Uh, you don't want to burn your barrel out, and you don't want to you don't want to ruin it. So, especially for a break-in procedure, um, uh, I'd say every 20 rounds, run the bore snake through it, or you know, put some oil, do the same. You know, run the bore snake after that. Um, just do that for I'd say about the first 100 rounds or so, and then you should be good with your accuracy. Um, definitely um, use different types of ammunition, just because. You took your rifle out and you're firing uh, 62 grain and it's shooting like shit. That doesn't mean your rifle sucks. 
That just means it doesn't like 62 grain bullets. Um, these are 55s. You know, you're going to need to buy a little bit of a variety pack, and these are the two most common are 55 and 62. So go out and get you a couple of different, you know, bullet weights. Try them out. Different manufacturers, you know, there's a ton of them out there. Um, and see what your barrel likes. Um, you know, after a good 100 rounds of, you know, cleaning and shooting, you should be pretty well broken in. Um, and now I'll go over putting the rifle back together. Okay guys, I'm going to put the uh, bolt carrier group together. Um, first thing you're going to do after you have it cleaned is you're going to put your bolt back in and you can see where the hole lines up for your cam pin right there. Now there's two different sides. It's going to fit in only one side. So if it's your first time doing that it doesn't fit in, see like that one is a no-go. You just roll the bolt over and it fits in that side. Turn your cam pin and slide your bolt forward. Make sure that cam pin's lined up. Just like that as you can see the way it is. Then you're going to take your firing pin, drop it in the back here, and it's going to slide forward, push it down, make sure it, it'll be pretty close to flush. Sorry about that. Pretty close to flush right there as you can see. And then next, your cotter pin. It's going to go in just like that. Some of them are, are going to be a little harder than others to get in depending on the manufacturer. This one slides in perfect, but like on my uh, uh, Rock River, that one for some reason was a pain in the ass to get it in there. It'll go, you just got to screw with it. Anyway, uh, you're good to go after that and we'll get it thrown in the rifle over here. Alright guys, now we're going to put in the uh, bolt carrier group and your uh, charging handle goes first. Slides in just like this at the top. Make sure you can see it. There's a little notch right there you can feel. Then next is you drop your bolt carrier group in just like this, making sure that the bolt is forward because if it's tilted sideways and the cam pin's tilted, it's not going to go in. So make sure your bolt is forward. Just slide it in, make sure it's flush with the uh, back of your upper just like this. And you uh, perform a functions check after this. Uh, as soon as you get your bolt in, put it on semi-automatic. Pull the trigger. Pull the charging handle. Let's see if I can get a different angle here. You're going to pull your, while well, holding the uh, trigger back, uh, pull your charging handle back. Let it go. And then you should hear that click just like that and fire just like that. That means your uh, fire control system, your trigger group, is working properly. There's nothing uh, in the bolt or uh, fire control that is abnormal. Um, and then from there, you know, however you want to put it back in your safe or however you want to handle it. I normally have the uh, hammer drop, like I said before, um, for storage reasons, just because of the springs. Um, I think that's about it. All right, Bless Cajun. Hopefully that uh, helps you out a little bit. Uh, if there's any other questions you have, uh, let me know or PM me, however you want to do it. Um, but uh, that's the uh, basics of taking the AR-15 apart and uh, my break-in procedures. Um, and that's that's all I got for right now. Take it easy, man. Hope that helped you.